song, let's dance away those worries here. A river of life flowing out of me Makes the lame to walk, makes the blind to see Open prison doors, let the captive free Got a river of life flowing out of me Spring up a well within my soul Spring up a well and make me whole Spring up a well and give it to me You life from the I've got a river of life flowing out of me Makes the lame to walk, makes the blind to see Open prison doors, sets the castle I've got a river of life flowing out of me Spring up a well within my soul Spring up a well and make me whole Spring up a well and give it to me New life abundantly yeah, I've got a river of life flowing out of me Makes the lame to walk, makes the blind to see Open the prison door, sets the captive free I've got a river of life flowing out of me Makes the lame to walk, makes the blind to see Open the prison door, sets the captive free I've got a river of life flowing out of me Makes the lame to walk, makes the blind to see Open the prison door, sets the captive free Got a river of life flowing out of me Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well. Come on, make me whole. Yes, Lord. And give it to me. You life about them. Let's dance. Woo! Spring up a well. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well. Come on, make me whole. Spring up a well and give it to me. You life abundantly. You life abundantly. You life abundantly. Let's give a praise offering.
for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my Lord. I love you for the cross. I love you for the cross. I love you for the cross, my Lord. See from his head. God's going to come deeply today. He's going to come deeply today. He's going to break off things that you've been struggling with. There's been contention in certain things. It's going to be, and I'm 
definitely. There's going to be prayer at the end for those who some things you can't get through something. We're going to break it today. We're going to break that today. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I'm breathing, I'm breathing.
And I will lean back Knowing the loving arms Of a beautiful father Breathing Knowing he is good He's a love like no other Yeah, yeah, now I can see now I can see your love is better than all the others that I've seen. And I'm breathing deep from all your goodness, your love and kindness to me. Now I can see. Now I can see your love is better than all the others that I see. And I'm breathing deep from all your goodness, your love and kindness to me. And I will. In the loving arms of a beautiful father. And breathe deep and know that he is good. He's a love like no other. I will lean back and I will lean back in the loving arms of a beautiful father breathe deep and know that he is good he's a love like no Your love sustain me before I even knew what love was. This is God's promise. You brought me here to rest. And given me space to breathe. So I'll stay here until it sinks in. And I will lean back in the loving arms of a beautiful. Breathe deep and know that he is good. He's a love like no other. I will lean back. I will lean back in the loving arms of a beautiful father. And I will breathe deep and know that he is good. He's a love like no other. Breathe in. God, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Breathing, I'm breathing, I'm breathing, I'm breathing. Bring your heart.
I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. God wants you love the vibes. Sing to him now. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. Yeah. 
You laid aside, you laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered up of those you had created, and you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and earth. Really want to worship. Really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. Choose to love. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at of those you had created. You took all my guilt and shame, then you died and you rose again. Hallelujah! You rose again. So I choose. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart. I'm yours forever and ever. I will choose to love you, God. You're the only one who died for me, gave your life. You have set me free. So I lift my voice to you. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You're the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice. So I lift my voice to you. So I lift my voice to you. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Let's give Jesus a praise offering. To start off, let's just be a little bit real. Who has been absolutely shattered, exhausted, worn out for the past two or three months? Oh, it's not just me. There's a surprise. It's just been a season where we have just been emotionally, physically, mentally exhausted. And it's just been like, God, give me a break. We've kind of gone into survival mode maybe just a little bit to get by. Just me personally, we've had operations and trips to A&E. We've had mental health situations kicking off. And amongst it all, I'm not able to sleep because the rest of the house keeps me awake. Hoorah! That also happened last night. So it is absolutely bonkers, and I'm tired. Or I was. And so I went, so, so usually in the morning, my usual, um, my rhythm is usually to get up early, because literally that is the only time I get to myself in the entire day. And I was just getting more and more tired. I was trying to drag myself out of bed. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. He basically was saying, turn around, woman, go back to sleep. My grace is sufficient for you. And I had this vision of Jesus one Sunday as I was absolutely exhausted and just really tired and just leaning into God. And I was in the spirit and I saw Jesus come off his throne, and he made his way down the stairs. And it's like one of those scenes where um, the crowd split as Jesus walked through the angels and the archangels and the whole company of heaven to face me. Woo! 
And he came towards me and I just locked eyes with him. And in that moment, I was like, God, oh, I, I need to go and do that. Oh, and I have that and that to do. Oh, and what about this situation? And what about that situation? But as I continued to look in his eyes, I knew that looking at him was enough. And as I, I began, he, knew, he knows your heart. He knows your mind. He didn't, I didn't need to say anything. And I knew what was going on in me. And just I could see from the corner of my eye as I was locking eyes with him, he was sending angels to deal with the situations that were troubling me and worrying me. All I have to do is fix my eyes on Jesus. And yeah, of course, there's practically things I actually have to do in life. But actually, if I take on those worries and those burdens upon myself, I become even more exhausted. And it's locking eyes with Jesus, those eyes of fire that just burn through you. And you know that he is enough. Can you look at Jesus today? See him face to face. And say, Jesus, you are enough. One of my favorite um, passages in the Bible is, is in John 6. And, John, and Jesus is talking, I've actually preached on it before. Jesus is talking about eating my body and drinking my blood. And for a whole whack load of um, disciples, that was just too much. The people who were following were saying, no, that's enough. I'm turning away. Your teaching is too hard. I don't accept it. I don't understand it. And Jesus turns to Simon Peter and he says, what about you? And Simon Peter says, where else would I go? Where else would I go? You have the words of eternal life. You are life itself. Where else would I go? I know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus, I know that you are the Messiah. Jesus, I know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, I know that you can meet my needs where I am. I know you are the all-sufficient one. I know that you are the beginning and you are the end. Where else would I go? And so he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, I'm just going to go through a little bit. Say, so when Jesus talks to me and when I'm in the spirit with him, I immediately go back to scripture. I have to ground my spiritual experiences in scripture. And so when he begins to speak to me, I am I'm there. My grace is sufficient. I know that connects to 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. So let me just read that for you. Have we managed to get it sorted this morning by any chance? No? Okay, never mind. To be fair, I didn't chase it up, but never mind. Don't, don't worry too much. Don't make it a big hoo-ha. Um, 2 Corinthians, it's there. <laughs> So I'll just start reading 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. So in a likewise manner, oh dear, there we go. Um, Paul had just had this amazing experience. He'd been in the heavenlies. He'd been in the way he calls it, was caught up in the spirit. I was in the third heaven. He'd had this phenomenal experience of Jesus. But then he turns around and says, but to keep me from being conceited. Because of these surpassing great revelations, there was given to me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. And three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly. Huh, will we? I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And as he spoke those words to me, I have to study them. I have to get into the meatiness of scripture and go and look um, into the Greek. So I'm going to just kind of share what I have learned along this journey of being absolutely exhausted and worn out and life's kicking off all over the place. He's spoken, my grace is sufficient. So, the first word, my grace, is the Greek word charis. 
Some of you know, may know acaris because it was based on that word for grace within the Bible. And so charis means the Lord's favor extended towards us. He is always leaning into us and disposed to bless us and be near to us. He is always favorable towards us to share in his benefits. Grace is his loving kindness, leaning into us, extended towards us. So he's leaning. Where you are, he's leaning into you. He's leaning towards you. His favor is extended to you in your weakness. My grace is sufficient. That Greek word is archaeo, means to assist, to be suffice, to be enough, to be strong. It also means, in Strong's Concordance, um, to ward off and to defend. He leans towards us, He extends himself towards us. And in that moment, he's not just leaning, but he's also defending. I like that concept. I love it. So my grace means, I am, my grace is enough. It is all your, it is all you need. For my power, that Greek word for power is dunamis. Um, It's a word where we get dynamite from. It's a miraculous power, strength, and might, and force, and ability to perform. So we don't just get a little bit of help. It isn't just a little bit of support. It isn't just, well, I'll just make you kind of strong enough to get by. It's a dunamis power that is a strength and a might that comes directly from the Spirit of God. My grace is enough. It is all you need. It leans towards you. It extends towards you. It helps defend against what is coming against you. And my power, that dunamis power, is made perfect in my weakness. It just sounds a little bit bonkers because it's upside down kingdom and it doesn't make any sense that in my weakest moment that that power would be the most thing that would be evident. Surely it is when I'm in a good place and when I am strong and things are going well and I can walk through life quite easily enough because I can have the power of God show and demonstrate through me. No, it's in your weakest place that his power is able to demonstrate itself more effectively. And it is made perfect. The Greek word for that is teleo. Um, The Amplified Classic Version says, power and strength to show themselves most effective in your weakness. Teleo, to bring to an end. It is completed, fulfilled, finished, accomplished, and concluded. In John 19.30, when Jesus is on the cross and he says, it is finished, this is the Greek word that he uses, teleos. It is finished. It is completed. But also there is a link to that it is a process. It's a bit like a telescope that's unfolding one stage at a time so that it can function at full capacity. So I might only know this bit right now, but as I continue on my journey, there is an extension of that telescope so that I can reach the fullness of the capacity and effectiveness that he can work through me. The necessary process with the results rolling over to the next level. My grace is enough, it's all you need. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. So what's that Greek word? Asthenia, E-A. Asthenia, yeah. We'll go with that. Means weakness, frailty can also mean illness and suffering. It's not just mean I'm feeling a little bit tired. It's actually a frailty and a weakness and illness and a suffering. It refers to an ailment that deprives someone of enjoying or accomplishing 
what they would like to do. And within Paul's context, when he is writing to Corinthians 12, um, the um, different people have ideas about what it possibly could be, this thorn in the flesh. Some people say potentially he's got eye problems. Um, because in some of the other letters, he writes, you know, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to write this right now. Potentially that could be because he's got problems with his eyes. Other um, sources say it might be to do with malaria. And so he's really struggling with that. So Paul is saying in that place of weakness and frailty and even illness and suffering, my power, his power is made perfect in weakness. It doesn't make sense, does it? So let's just carry on, and then the exciting bit comes. Okay. Therefore, now, this is what Paul says. He has this revelation, amazing revelation. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses and my infirmities. Woohoo! I'm ill. His power is made perfect in my weakness. I'm feeling exhausted and tired and I've had enough of life. Can I really boast about that? I mean, that is a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Can we do that? We're more likely to say, God, please make it easy. God, give me a break. Make it stop. Why is this happening? Change my situation. And he is saying, but my grace is sufficient for you. I can lean further into you in your weaknesses, in your frailty, in your illnesses. Why? Because it's at that point that we have reached the end of ourselves. In, um, in Matthew 5, and it talks about the Beatitudes, in the message translation, the first one it says, Blessed are you when you're at the end of your rope, because with less of you, there is more of God. And just maybe, just maybe, it's through our situations that we begin to lay down more of ourselves and everything that is within us where we try and control things and we move things and we move things in our own strength because literally we can't do it. God, I literally cannot do this. You actually have to. His power is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly <laughs> about my weaknesses so that Christ's dunamis power, that miraculous strength and power, may rest on me. Now, looking at the different translations about this word rest on me, the different trans... Do you mind getting me a bit of water, please? Thank you. Um, the different translations say... So Christ's power can work through me. Christ's power may rest upon me. Christ's power may dwell in me. Christ's power may reside in me. Well, which one is it then? It's all of them. Because he rests on me, in me, and through me. Oh, I feel a bit posh now. But now you've just given me a... Oh, and you even opened it. Oh, you're so lovely. <laughs> now I've got to try and put the top back on. <laughs> so, the rest on me, what does it actually mean in the Greek? It is episkinose. It literally means to tent upon. The Amplified Classic translation says, I will gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities, that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. And just as I read that, and I kind of was in the spirit, and I saw his tent, the tent of the Lord, it goes over over the top of me. I am in the tent. 
In my weaknesses, he comes over me like a tent. And I suddenly become the tabernacle of God. And so he's not only over me, but he is also within me. And I become a dwelling place for that power and that strength. Psalm 91. He who dwells and lives in me in the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in him. Do we dwell in him? Do we live in the shelter of the Most High? Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. And I think all of us probably have that safe space where we go in the spirit or we go to with Jesus. And one of mine is actually in that verse 4 where I go and hide underneath the shadow of the mighty where I am covered with his feathers. And there I am safe and secure. It's like that tent that he puts over the top of me. But not only do I find him as my refuge, my strength, my shield, but I also have that power that dwells within me. I have the overshadowing of El Shaddai. God the Almighty, the El Shaddai. What does El Shaddai mean? There's quite a few different translations, but one of them means the all-sufficient one. God says again, I am enough. Where else can you go? I have the words of eternal life. I am the Messiah, the Holy One of God. So 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, That is why, again, another challenge. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. Do we delight in those? Most probably not. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And there is a mystery about this that I believe God wants to teach us about. Especially because most of you have actually admitted you are exhausted. What's that mystery, God? What is it to dwell in your tent? What is it to have um, your grace leaning towards me and being extended towards me? What is it for then that grace to also be my defense and to be my shield? What is it to know that dunamis power living at work in, in me, even though I'm absolutely exhausted? But that comes from looking into the eyes of Jesus where we give it all away for his yoke is easy and his burden is light do we really know that no <laughs> i just saw a few shaking of the heads but his yoke is easy therefore if we feel the weight of a yoke it is probably not his yoke so what are you doing that's potentially not something that God wants you to do at this moment in time. Maybe you're knackering yourself out doing something he doesn't actually want you to do. My question over the past few months is, has been, God, what do you not want me to do? I recognize my season in my life right now. I need to step back from a few things. What do I need to not be doing? That your grace and favor isn't actually on at this moment in time. Um, that reminds me of, you know, Philippians 4.13, where it says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And everybody thinks that literally means all things. It actually doesn't. Oh dear, I'm a heretic. No, it actually means 
I can do all the things that he has given me favor and grace to do. So how many things are you doing that you literally don't need to be doing? The Helps Word study says, it embodies strength that gets into the fray, i.e. engaging the resistance. So the Lord strengthening you with a combative, confrontive force to achieve all that he gives you faith and grace for. What do you need to not be doing right now? Okay. And so in the middle of all of this, Life's gone a little bit crazy. Family's struggling. I'm feeling exhausted and weak. What do I see? I'm there in the spirit. Actually, it was at Singing Rooms, Dave. Dave was singing about God roaring. And as he was doing that, I was in the spirit, and I saw Yahweh rise up as a mighty warrior. I saw him get off his throne and he starts putting on his armor and it is shiny and gold and I see him with this massive um, sword in his hand and it is the mighty warrior, the man of war, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts and commander of the angel armies who is arising in this time. It is Jehovah Gibor Milchalmor, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Exodus 15, uh, three, hmm, 2 to 3 says, The Lord is my strength and my song. The person who wrote Exodus understood that he is his strength. And my song, he has become my salvation because I can't save myself. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. In the King James Version, it says, Yahweh is a man of war. And I think so often when we are in those kind of low places and those difficult places and we're feeling weak, that concept is kind of beyond us and it doesn't really make sense, but actually in so many ways it makes perfect sense because the weakest we are, it means that the man of war can arise and he can be God and he can be king. And so there is much uh, um, activity in the heavenly realms right now and the angels are receiving assignments and the Lord himself is ready in himself for war and he will fight your battles for you and he will be the one who breaks through. This whole concept of him rising up as a mighty warrior is a promise that there is breakthrough to come. That there is a breakthrough. But we do not make it ourselves. We cannot do it in our own strength. It is him who does it. I'm going to stick my neck out here. Who has had significant small breakthroughs in the last two or three weeks? Yeah. I prophesy those will increase. The more you... Lay yourself down, and in your weaknesses, you say, God, I give it over to you so that he can arise as a man of war around you and in your circumstances. There will be breakthrough for the man of war. The Lord Sabaoth, Jehovah Gibor, is active right now in the heavenly realms. But quite often, our breakthroughs don't necessarily look how we expect them to look. Sometimes we tell God how it's meant to look, and, but then we can end up missing the breakthrough that is already occurring because we're focusing on the breakthrough that we think should happen, but actually it's happening over here. God, give me eyes to see the breakthrough that you are making happen over here. Turn my head, not upon my circumstances and where I expect to see the breakthrough, but turn my head towards the breakthrough that is already happening. 
And is there something I need to be doing to action this breakthrough? Is there something I need to partner with God in to make this breakthrough happening? Because it's a partnership. And Zechariah 4, 6. We all know this one. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. That word almighty there has the concept of war and army and warfare. And he says, what are you, O mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone, which is the very last stone to, to put down, to shouts of, God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will all also complete it. So this is in the context of they've come back from the exile in Babylon and they're beginning to build up the, um, the temple and build up the walls. And this is specifically talking about how Zerubbabel and Joshua will work together to build this temple. That's Joshua the priest, not it's a different Joshua. Okay. So his hands will also complete it. Zerubbabel, you've started this you will also complete it. That word complete can mean, obviously mean finish, but it is also um, connected to war again. You gain the completion by violence. I don't mean go around knocking people out. I mean in the spirit, spiritual um, warfare, where we complete it by partnering with him, partnering with his spirit. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, finish what you started. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. Finish what you started. And this is where you need discernment because there can be two, um, two ways of looking at this. Finish what you started could mean see it through, complete it. Finish what you started could also mean lay it down. Let it come to an end. And that's going to mean different things to each one of us. And that's where we need the discernment of the Lord. Say, okay, God, where does this apply to me? I need to finish what I have started. Do I need to see it through to completion? Or do I need to end it and lay it down? And the Lord said, you have not come to completion because you are not fully operating according to my agenda. Assess your heart and see if you are fixed on your own agenda. For I will not back man-made agenda. He's calling us to assess our hearts. What are my agendas? Have I got so fixed on what I'm trying to complete and trying to finish that I've somehow missed God in it all and I'm pushing it through in my own strength? Or am I able to open my hands and say, God, my opinions don't matter. My agenda is in ruins before you because I just want what you want, God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done and let not my agenda or my opinions get in the way of what you want to do. And that's a transformation of the mind where we allow the Spirit of God to make us aware of how our minds think and how often we don't necessarily think in kingdom ways. We think of the kingdoms of this world because that's how we've been brought up. That's the culture that we are in. And we need to allow him to come through so that he can burn our agendas and burn our opinions so that his kingdom can truly come. And so I'm just going to bring these concepts together by looking at Zephaniah 3 17, which I'm hoping I put a thingy in. But 
So this is in actually in the context of judgment and injustice and idolatry and how the people of Israel had turned away and there was pride in their hearts and so their judgment was going to come and Israel was going to be taken away into captivity into Babylon. But God gives this promise. He says, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord your God is in your midst. He is around you. But that Hebrew word kareb also means he is in your inward parts. That whole concept of Gen, that he is around us and he is covering us, but he is also within us. The mighty one who will save. What is that word again? That is the Gibor word. The mighty one, victorious in battle, the warrior king, the man of war. He will take great delight in you. The Hebrew kind of says, he will rejoice in joy. It's this whole concept of you can't really find the words to explain how joyous he actually is and how much he does delight in you. And this concept of an ever swirling, ever moving, delighting and joy in God. But he's a warrior. So it's a warrior who dances over you. It's a mighty warrior, the man of war who comes to your aid. He is mighty and victorious, but he is also dancing over you because he takes such delight in you. It is exceeding gladness. It is over and above and beyond. It is the purest form of joy that you will ever find. And it produces laughter and movement as he dances over us. And then it says, he will quiet you with his love. He will make you still. He will enable you to find rest and peace. As you're looking at Jesus, as you're looking at him in his eyes, face to face, in that moment, we are able to be stilled, to find rest and peace. I am in the awe of knowing that exceeding joy over me and it makes me speechless, therefore I am quiet. There are no words. The victorious warrior who tents over us, who dances over us and keeps us secure. He will rejoice over you with singing. The word singing can also be translated with shouts of joy. There will be screaming excitement. And gil, that word for rejoice, it is a violent emotion. I mean, we're just so British, aren't we, with our emotions? We really don't express our joy that amazing. I know some people who are a little bit more exuberant than others, and God bless you for that exuberance. And you know what? When you have been told that you are too much, it is a lie. In the name of Jesus, you are not too much because you are expressing the violent emotion of God himself. And I think we all need a little bit of what they've got, to be honest. (laughs) So do our emotions reflect God's? And I have to say, this is a journey I've been on. It's been a long journey because I'm quite, I I think more logically, and I think people who think more logically are less likely to be quite emotional about things. Do you know what? Your emotions are not a sin. Whatever they are, whether you are sad, whether you are grieving, whether you are angry, those emotions are not a sin. What? can come out of them possibly can be because we might not do work them out in the right way but those emotions in and of themselves are not a sin and I free you in the name of Jesus to feel 
right now in the name of Jesus. I release you to be able to feel. And for some people, that's going to be really, really uncomfortable. But let's go on that journey together that you can feel, that you can have the emotions that reflect God. Because he is a restorative God. And I believe he is doing a, a healing and a restorative work in our emotions. And he just wants to pull our British culture out of us so that we might reflect the kingdom of God more effectively. And even in those... There are no negative emotions, by the way. But what we perceive to be negative emotions, those are the places where our weaknesses truly are and truly lie. And what does he promise? His power is made perfect in those weaknesses. So Jesus, thank you that you are a mighty God, that you are a victorious warrior who dances over us, even in our weak moments, even in our stresses, and even in the places where we are grieving, where we are exhausted. God, thank you that you still delight in us in that place, and you are dancing over us, and you are arising as a mighty man of war in this hour. And in the name of Jesus, I speak breakthrough over you over every single one of you, but also I pray for the eyes to see where that breakthrough is. That you might have the eyes of the spirit of wisdom and understanding that you would see what he is doing and how he is doing it. That you would know that grace of God, that he would be leaning into you. That you would experience the favorableness of God over your life right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that dunamis power, that power, same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead would be active and living and working within you right now in the name of Jesus, even in your weakest, darkest places, that you would know that he is there. He is over you like a tent, but he is also dwelling within you. Holy Spirit like a fire. God, we ignite that fire once again. We acknowledge that fire so that in our weakest and worn out places, we would encounter you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, if anybody needs any prayer afterwards, whether it's to do with emotions, whether it's to do with what you're going through at the moment, where you need some breakthroughs, um, I'm sure there's a few of us who might. We started, that's where we started. Those who are weak, those who are weary, those who are feeling burnt out. You know, those people who put their hands up to Rachel's question, just put your hand on your heart this morning as we close our time together. Put your hand on your heart. What a beautiful vision that was that Rachel presented to us of that, that tent coming over us of his presence. That warrior God coming over us, dancing over us. You know, Jesus is dancing. The warrior God is dancing around you. <laughs> he's, he's dancing around you. And it's not just a, it's not a thrilly dance. It's not a nice Pentecostal service, dancers at the front type of dance. It is a war dance. It is a war dance. And it is a dance of victory around the tent of your life. He is celebrating his victory in your situation and your circumstance. Bef well before you can see anything changing. He is dancing. He's praising. And if you just join in, join in and 
praise and worship him, he'll dance all the more and that victory will come. That beautiful picture of that tent over our lives. Lord, I just pray for every single person with their hand on their heart. I pray they'll sense your tent, the tent of your presence, that tabernacle covering over their lives right now in Jesus' name. And they'll be able to see with eyes that you see with Jesus over every circumstance and situation. For Lord, you have won the victory. And Lord, we just abandon all striving. We abandon all effort. But Lord, we only do what you want us to do in those situations knowing that you will fight on our behalf, that you will, you will have the victory, that in our weakness, your power will be made perfect. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, David, for leading us. Thank you, Rachel, for bringing the word. God bless you. Have a great week.